before we dive into our workshop today, um, let me have uh, a quick poll here and ask you guys um, if you can hear me properly. Because if there is something wrong, then I might want to you know, adjust my volume or audio or something so it doesn't become a problem during the workshop. All right, perfect. Um, secondly, the resources that we will be using for our workshop, I have shared that in the WhatsApp group. If you scroll up, there are four files that we would be consulting during our workshop. One is a full length transcript that we will be coding today. Uh, another is the presentation that we will be using to understand qualitative data analysis. Third is the book, um, which is the textbook for understanding the qual quantitative analysis using in vivo, written by Nicholas Wolf, who has conducted over 100 workshops all over the world and is considered an authority on the subject. I have also shared an Excel file for the literature review. If you want to write a paper or a thesis, so what you can do is you can use this template to download the information according to your own research and then read different papers and organize the information accordingly. I hope that everyone has already downloaded the files. If not, please go to WhatsApp and download all the information. Now this information will also be available on our Google Drive folder. So people who are late or who couldn't download that from the group, you can always do that. Also, um, you can coordinate with Osama and you know he'll be more than happy to help you with that. Uh, if you need any other resources, uh, feel free to message me and I will be able to give you the resources. One more thing during the workshop, um, people who have joined the workshop before then know that already, but for the newcomers, uh, my workshop pattern is a little bit different than others in that that i strongly believe that teaching you is only going to happen if you are going to participate in the workshop both as participants and hands-on workers that means that i will give you the opportunity to repeat the process and steps that i will teach you right in the workshop so that you are able to do that from your own hands. Because the purpose of the workshop is not for me to demonstrate what I know, but the purpose is for you guys to actually be able to do that on your own. Now, if you have any question at any point in all workshop, please feel free to raise your hand in Zoom, you can use the chat box or you can ask me to unmute you so you can ask any questions. I would just stop and I'll try to clarify before we move any further so that we are on the same page on the understanding of the topic that we're studying. Now, before we go ahead, um, let's have a quick introduction of our participant today so if we can go with the alphabetic uh, structure i'll just unmute your mic and you could tell briefly about you and your research interests uh, so i'll unmute first anam shafiq assalamu alaikum sir if you could just speak a little bit louder hello can you hear me sir yes. hello yes 
I am Anam Shafiq. I am from Rawalpindi. I am studying in Kast Capital University of Science and Technology at the moment, and I am doing PhD. I have recently completed my comprehensive exam. I have cleared that, and I am the very initial stage of uh, PhD research. So, and I am also teaching in Arid Agriculture University uh, as a lecturer. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, next up is Dhavna from India. Hi everyone. I'm Bhavna Negi. I teach at uh, Delhi University. I'm uh, writing a PhD. I have already collected data and I'm now using NBO. And for that reason, I'm uh, here in the workshop. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Bhavna. Then we have Dr. Rabia. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, uh, sir. Uh, I'm Rabia Nam Gandapur uh, from Peshawar, and I'm basically a dentist, but doing my MPhil in anatomy from Khyber Medical College, Peshawar. So much, Fatma. Fatma, you have the mic. Okay, I think she cannot hear us. Anyways, next we have Hire. Uh, who's Hire? Mm, doesn't seem like Mike's working for Hire also. Um, Azim? Assalamu alaikum. Uh, uh, can you hear me? Uh, Azim, I can't uh, hear you. Okay, my name is Muhammad Azim and I am from Lahore. Uh, I have uh, recently started my PhD in engineering management from UT Lahore. And uh, I'm interested to learn this new software. That's why I joined the class. All right, thank you so much. And we have Naheem. I am Naheem Khan. Okay, and then we have Noor. Assalamualaikum, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, Noor, we can hear you. Hi, this is Nureyman. Uh, I'm from Lahore. Ex uh, recently, I have done my MSL from University of Lahore. Currently, I'm working as a human resources officer in a micro uh, finance institution. Uh, I'm the purpose of uh, joining this workshop because I'm working on the OD part of my organization. We are doing personality analysis uh, on our employees. So I want to enhance my research skills and I want to gain more knowledge about this software and also want to pursue my PhD in future. All right, thank you so much, uh, Noor. Thank you, sir. And next we have Rabia. Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. And then we have Sara Chaudhary. And wait, Sara, I'm trying to unmute you.
Okay, do you have a mic, Sarah? Because it's not allowing me to unmute you. Okay, I guess she's a little bit away. Uh, next up, we have the scheme. Assalamualaikum, everyone. I'm the Skeen Mansoor. I did my MPhil in anthropology from Kaidiyatam University. And currently, I am uh, a lecturer in medical anthropology at National University of Medical Sciences, Rabi Pindi. And uh, I have done quite a lot of qualitative researches, but have never used in vivo. So I would like to explore this. And my research interests are looking at caregiving experiences in home care. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. Um, I guess we have a very diverse um, range of participants and different subjects. Um, we have got medicine here. We have got anthropology and psychology. Um, so it's going to be very interesting um, the session we have um, lined up for today. Um, as for the program for today, um, let me share the uh, division of how we're going to be studying the um, course to work during three days. So as we shared on our Facebook event as well as our Google Classroom page, uh, can everyone see that? Okay. So that was our three-day program. Uh, so what we're going to be doing our um, first day, we're going to be covering um, the NVivo workspace, um, how it looks like, um, what are the different areas of NVivo, how do we import files. Uh, we're also going to be studying different types of data files that we can use in NVivo. Um, and then once you've imported that, uh, We'll find out how to be basic, do the basic coding for the text-based files. Um, remember, um, NVivo is a qualitative analysis software. Um, that means that the theoretical part of your research um, in which you select theories, find research gap, develop hypothesis, um, that is done in NVivo. Uh, we're going to be looking at the presentation shortly also um, to get into um, a little bit of uh, background of um, how quality qualitative research is developed and uh, how we can use NVivo to structure that. Um, we're also going to be studying uh, the use of queries to explore and code our data. Um, so what we will do is that we will use our uh, files and then we will code the relevant information by asking NVivo's um, auto explore function uh, to find out common themes and words and frequencies and things like that. Um, we'll also record comments and ideas um, while coding our literature um, so that we keep recording our opinions, um, our beliefs, our and criticisms on the codes and themes that are emerging throughout our analysis. Um, then we're going to also be studying briefly about classifications and the attribute values to do the comparative analysis um, between different codes. Uh, I'll show you in and we will uh, interface once we're there um, how it looks like. Um, we'll also use the cr cross tab and matrix coding queries. Um, to find a different emerging themes and how they relate with each other. Um, finally, we're going to be doing um, colorful and beautiful data visualizations um, to make our um, analysis look more presentable and understandable for uh, people who are not familiar with um, text-based queries or um, they, they're not researchers. And uh, finally, we're going to be ending with uh, exporting our findings uh, from the research through the reports that NVivo generates. And we're going to be exporting those code books to share with um, both 
other researchers, your supervisors, um, journal editors, um, and your colleague if you're doing the collaborative work. Um, so half of that we're going to be doing today, and the other half, uh, once we're familiar with the interface, we're going to be doing tomorrow, and we're going to be doing practical interactive exercises in which I'll give you the opportunity to um, play with the software uh, while I'll guide you um, how you can do that. Um, on the third and final day, we're going to be using EndNote, which is a, a famous software for reference management and citations. Um, we'll tell you how to create a library of the um, citations that we have collected. And, okay, sorry, can you hear me now? Okay. All right, so um, then to, afterwards, we're going to download the results uh, from literature search into EndNote. We will use different databases for that. You could use Google Scholar if you have access to Web of Science, uh, which is the most famous um, academic database. That would be even better because you know that gives you the I don't know what's going on because I haven't changed anything. Is it too loud or is it distorting? Again, okay, I'll try to speak and see you know, if you get it now. Is it any better now? All right, okay. Um, and then we're going to be organizing our EndNote library um, in a way that would serve as um, literature review. Um, and then I'll also show you how to insert your citations um, in Word file where you're going to be writing your papers. Um, And that's those three days that we're going to be um, studying. Um, two days allocated to NVivo, and then uh, oh, finally we're going to be studying EndNote. Um, sorry, it's up to you if you want to use EndNote or Mendeley's. Both are good tools to do the reference management. EndNote is a commercial software that's um, being used um, widely in academic circles. Um, that's a paid software. Um, it has a little bit of more features. You can do the collaborative work. Um, but if you want to use other softwares like Mendeley or Zotero, you can do that. Um, we have done a workshop um, on that previously uh, in which I have uh, gotten into details about EndNote, Mendeley, and Zotero. And you can also use Latex if you're good with syntax and programming. Um, that would be easier and that's free, um, but it's rather limited in its um, approach uh, towards uh, collaboration. So it's totally up to you, um, but it, it's a good choice. It, it's a widely used software. Okay, so now that we know about the program, um, let me introduce the book that we're gonna be using. Um, can everyone see the book? Okay, I think I have to share the screen every time I pull it up. All right, so that's the book we're gonna be using. It's called Qualitative Analysis Using NVivo. Um, and um, it goes into detail about the five level uh, quality, qualitative data analysis method. Uh, it's by Nicholas Wolf and Christina Silver 
Um, I've already shared that on the WhatsApp group. So you can download that book and we're gonna be referring to the book um, on how do we structure our qualitative analysis because uh, one of the problems um, that makes NVivo quite complicated for most people is they do know the um, technical aspects of the software itself, but um, conceptually they don't know how to organize their data. So you have to be very, very careful and deliberate with what do you want to achieve uh, through your literature review. Um, you want to make sure that you know you develop your um, hypothesis. Um, so you have to clearly have a demarcation of your research scope and, and your goals. And only then you would be able to um, use all the um, sources and files in NVivo to help you to get to that stage. So that's the book um, that we're going to be using. On top of that, uh, we're going to be using different uh, files that I'll be using in today's workshop. Um, and that's the presentation that uh, we're going to be consulting uh, today. Um, so what I aim to do um, is to make sure that by end of this lecture, um, you have a very good understanding of the nature of qualitative data, what that is. Um, and Vivo is a very versatile software, Bhavna. So um, it uses grounded approach. Um, I also use grounded approach in my own um, research work, uh, and it's a very good tool for that. Um, so what you can do is you can import your interview transcriptions in NVivo, and then you can code them by subject, and then you know um, you can further subcode different themes, and then um, you can do the uh, thematic analysis. Um, so different stages um, that you have to go through. We're going to be looking at those stages um, shortly, um, and I'll let you know how grounded theory. Uh, works in that. So um, we're going to be studying about the nature of qualitative data. And uh, we're also going to be um, studying about the features of qualitative um, analysis. Um, and we're also going to be studying some of the challenges that we face um, when we analyze qualitative data. Uh, we would learn how to import um, files and then how to code these documents. Um, remember, the files can be of many types, not only the text file, it could be pictures, it could be audio. I'm going to show it to you today. Uh, and then I'll uh, also explain uh, how we produce queries and final reports like we um, discussed in our workshop um, program agenda. So um, to begin with the qualitative data, what are the questions that we basically answer in qualitative research? Um, so there are these three big questions, uh, which are what, how, and why. So as you notice that all these questions, um, these are the questions that cannot be answered in a yes or no. So they're not closed-ended questions. So whenever you ask these three questions from people, you know they have to explain it to you or they have to give you a longer open-ended answer about their opinions, about their observations, experiences. Um, and that's what um, makes qualitative data important for researchers where they have to analyze uh, data that does not have discrete values. Uh, so for example, when we use SPSS, we have certain numbers that we can play with. We can run parametric and non-parametric analysis on that, but you cannot do it the same way on qualitative analysis. So it's a huge challenge. Um, that is um, how to quantify our qualitative answers and find an emerging theme from them, and then uh, represent that in a way that uh, would give a researcher or um, a 
thesis committee an insightful idea of why is your research impactful um, so some of the examples of what uh, qualitative data sources there are um, for example in quantitative research um, you can have measurements you can have distances temperature similarly in qualitative data sources are different you can have interviews uh, focus groups um, different speeches um, questionnaires that you give people uh, and they fill it back for you or online questionnaires also and through google surveys or qualtrics or survey monkey and uh, whatever tool you're using to create that um, we also have journals and diaries uh, for example there is a famous diary uh, from the second world war uh, which is the anne frank's diary um, people have done all right so we were discussing um, that we can um, analyze our journals and diaries um, another source for uh, qualitative data is the documents um, in the word files um, or historical documents or other things that we can analyze um, we could also note our observations and uh, we could use the audiovisual materials in that we're going to be looking at it how we can transcribe that um, that could be information from websites uh, we could also uh, get data from social media like twitter um, or facebook um, or instagram and use this so anything um, in general that uh, is not of a quantitative nature that can be measured in numbers uh, we can pretty much use it for our qualitative data uh, well, Sarah, uh, the sample size does not actually apply to qualitative research um, because in qualitative research, we're more focused on the subjective measurement of how people respond to a certain situation um, or a certain uh, event. Um, and that is something um, that doesn't require you to have a sample size to have statistical significance. These terms are only applicable for quantitative analysis, um, not for the qualitative analysis. So as long as you have uh, enough participants um, and you have detailed interviews, and then you're using other sources with that, uh, it does not matter um, if you have a certain sample size or not. Uh, now, what is the um, procedure of analyzing qualitative data? What, what are the steps that we can take? Uh, I don't know what I can change to make it better. Um, it's never been like this before. Anyway, so what we can do is that um, once we have our data imported in NVivo, what we do is that uh, we create some generalizations. You can also call it hypothesis. And then with that, you can identify the similarities between those hypotheses. And then once you have done that, you can extreme diff extract different themes um, and then identify relationship between those themes and the differences between these themes. So what you've essentially done is that you can identify both the differences and similarities. You create generalization and exact themes, and then the relationships between them. So it's kind of a circular process that you keep doing when you use NVivo. Now, what are the objectives? Why are we doing qualitative analysis? Um, so these are some of the answers uh, that actually explain our need to do qualitative analysis, which is to draw conclusions about opinions of others and their experiences, to develop uh, theories and to find out if there's a research gap um, in studies that have been done and there's something that's still left out for you to do, 
And then you can also develop your hypothesis uh, through that. So once you have all the theories input, you found um, a theory, you think that, you know, that's, that's, that's your explanation of the phenomena being researched. Then you um, see that, you know, if there's a hypothesis that you can create out of this theory, and then you can collect data to um, assert then that this theory actually works. That's the whole purpose of qualitative analysis. Uh, hypothesis actually depends on um, your research framework, um, Pavna. For example, if you are doing research in education um, and you want to find out uh, that disabled um, children, they are generally uh, more sympathetic in comparison with um, children with no noticeable disability. And so your hypothesis would be that uh, people who are disabled or children who are disabled, they are generally kinder. Um, so that's your hypothesis, which is um, yet n not proved or disproved. So what you have to do is that you have to collect data um, and then you have to do the comparison and then you have to find out um, if that's, uh, a state, that statement um, has been proven or not. So what you postulate in the beginning is called your hypothesis. Um, I don't believe that we have open-ended questions in quantitative research. Huh? Uh, quantitative research actually measures the um, strength or weakness uh, on certain scales, uh, like the temperature, or, um, height, or width. Um, that can every measure thing that we can measure that is part of quantitative research. Um, that is very different from qualitative research. Um, so sample size, um, it, it's totally different universe. So they do not apply with each other. Yeah, I mean, you can also uh, have a single item questionnaire, um, but you cannot actually use it um, to analyze um, in a quantitative analysis software like SPSS. So you can ask people of their opinion, I mean, and that's called mixed model research. So what you do is that you have a qualitative portion and then you collect data for the quantitative portion also to make sure that um, your data actually reflects in your theory also. So you cannot create a mixed model research, but um, by its nature, quantitative research does not have open-ended questions. Um, now about coding data. How do we code data? There are different ways in we could code data. You can have the deductive coding or you could have, have the inductive coding. Uh, so before we do that, let's head over to NVivo where you could actually see that more in action rather than me explaining the theory. Let's just go and um, give you a a taste of how NVivo looks like. Um, so you can actually um, use different strategies for um, designing questions. Uh, one of the easiest method and one that's very common, um, that is to actually use questionnaires and scales that have already been used. So that means, um, people who have already developed the scales and established the validity and reliability of um, their scales. Um, that um, is um, something that you can do. On the other hand, if you want to develop your own scale or questionnaires, you have to make sure that um, the items in the questionnaire actually measures the constructs that you are trying to evaluate. For example, if you, are making a scale that measures depression, then you need to make sure that um, the item that you include in that actually uh, measure depression. Um, and it, it's generally uh, not at the scope um, where you could um, develop your own questionnaire. It's a very hard task. You have to run different analysis on that, um, reliability and uh, validity tests. Um, 
through repeated measures and it's not a very easy thing to do. So I'd suggest that you would use um, already available scales. Um, that's a lot easier and these days you can find scales on almost any, everything. Okay, so now we have our NVivo window here. Everyone can see that? All right, perfect. So um, this is how it uh, looks like. Um, but now we're going to be um, talking about uh, the uh, validity and reliability issues also. Um, so you know, hold that thought, you know, let's uh, go over the interface for NVivo uh, and then, you know, we can uh, address that. So um, this is the first window that you're going to be looking when you open the NVivo and software. Uh, some of that um, might not um, be the same. For example, um, if you open the window, sometimes Unite will give you option uh, like this to select a project that you want to choose and if that's your first time it would ask you to create a new project so you can name their project and simply start and once you select this uh, project then you know it would open the window that i showed you previously um, so i have different projects here and uh, there's different books um, and uh, the big five personality model um, that I have developed in cooperation with University of Pennsylvania. Uh, people who have joined the workshop before, they know that, you know, we have recently translated that to Urdu and we have successfully used that um, university and we have um, seen huge improvement in academic performance. Um, so these are multiple projects. So I'm going to go ahead and um, use a book called Coming Apart that is... Um, a bestseller um, in sociology and anthropology by Charles Murray. Um, he's a professor at Harvard University. And there's another book by him uh, called The IQ Bell Curve, which was very controversial, um, but still a very interesting one. Um, he's known for writing uh, books that are very insightful. Um, so how you do it is, so it, since I already have the project, uh, if you don't have that, um, any files in the project, how we import the file is that, uh, there are two ways to do that. One is you could go to this quick access menu on the left, you see where I'm hovering my mouse. You can select the files. And once you select the files, you will have all the files listed um, that you already have um, in it. Now, when you right click the option, you can either create a new file. Now you see there it's giving you different um, options. You can create a new document or the audio file um, or a video file. Uh, if you already have that, you can print that list. You can sort that and you can see the view. Uh, for example, if you want to see the pictures or details, you can select that. Uh, if you have edited the files and then you haven't I've seen all of them. You can refresh that to see the changes. Um, and there are different options you can import it from. Uh, depending on the kind of data that you have, you can import different files. Um, you can also import surveys uh, from SurveyMonkey, Goldrix, text file, Excel file. Or you can select the import items on top and then navigate to your computer where your files are. So if um, I were to um, select this import item, it would open up the uh, navigator or file manager on my computer where I have my files. So I'm going to go ahead and import the files that I want to import. Um, so I already have one book there. Uh, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to import another file that's a US presidential debate. Um, that's the ninth democratic debate in Las Vegas. Uh, and we're going to be importing that in our NVivo system. And we're going to do the analysis on that. So that's between Elizabeth Warren, 
um, and <laughs> Sanders, um, and we have Mike Bloom. Um, so they have um, their names, and then they have um, their text, what they said in, during the debate. So we're going to be analyzing that as part of our and we will workshop. So it's like open and then it's going to ask you and uh, to import. Uh, for now, ignore that. There's a create a case for each imported file. I'm going to be addressing that um, later what a case is. For now, let's keep it simple so that you can get all your data in one place and then we can start analyzing that. Um, as a side note, uh, NVivo is pretty straightforward when it comes to documentation. So if you look, go at this blue um, circle with the I sign in that, it's going to explain it to you what that is. Uh, at some point, if you need any help, you can also go to the NVivo menu for help and you can read the documentation on that. So for now, right now, we're going to import that. And it's going to ask us for the um, name and the description um, of if there's anything else you want to add, um, you can write the description or you can leave that as it is and press OK. So now you see we have two files instead of one that we can use for um, analysis now. Um, so how we can um, further study that is, so if you want to start um, coding that, you can simply double click that. And that's going to open in the right pane. We're going to be studying um, how do we code um, the information inside, but before that, let's head on over to another tab where I can tell you what kind of data you can import. So one way of importing files was I told you to go to files and then um, you can select items and find where those files are in your computer and import them. The other way is um, to select the import tab and um, here we have different options. So I'm going to briefly go over the files um, that you can import in NVivo to um, discuss um, what kind of files we can use. Um, so first of all, um, there is something called nCapture. Now nCapture is a tool by NVivo um, that is basically to help you import web pages and social media data uh, from their respective website. Um, like nCapture can help you and gather data from Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. And then you're going to import this content into NVivo software. Uh, we're not going to be studying that today, um, but this is certainly an option if you ever want to explore that. Now, the other file type is our normal Excel file. Um, that should be um, the file type that you most of you are going to be using uh, in your research. Uh, and that's the one you also use with Google surveys. Um, and Google Forms and Sheets. Um, then we have the raw text um, with both of its extension, uh, text file or CSV, comma, limited file. Um, you can import those files in, in Vivo also. Uh, if you are taking your surveys on SurveyMonkey, um, it's basically a website where you can create questionnaires and give it out to people and then they can fill those forms and you will have respondents. Um, so you can connect NVivo with SurveyMonkey also and get the data from them. Uh, finally, this is a paid software, uh, Qualtrics. Uh, it's considered to be one of the best. Um, in foreign universities, you know, students um, have the license for that in which um, you can give, send questionnaires to people um, and it does basic analysis for you also like means and mods and um, standard deviations and things like that. And um, it displays wonderfully both on your desktop and your tablets and your uh, phones. Uh, so that's something that you can connect with NVivo also. 
Uh, finally, our, in our last workshop, we um, went over the quantitative uh, data analysis method and the software we use was SPSS. Um, so you can also import your SPSS files if you want to make it a part of your qualitative analysis. If for some reason you want to reference those files, you can import them. And then there are different classification um, sheets that you can use in the form of um, text files and spreadsheets. Um, you can also import the EndNote files. You can um, export the EndNote in XML file format, and then you can import that XML format within the NVivo. Um, and I think Sarah was asking that earlier, I mean, you can use Mendeley uh, file formats um, and import them in NVivo for further analysis. So that's, both of them are covered as well as Ref First and Zotero. All of them are reference softwares. So that's why it falls under the bibliography um, section. Um, then we have notes and emails. Um, we have memos here, like short memos that you can write about your um, opinions and your observations uh, on different cases and notes. We're going to be studying that. Um, Evernote is also a note keeping software. You can use that. Uh, OneNote is the Microsoft version of that. Outlook is your email um, app, so you can use that also. And then, you know, these are some of the methods that you can use. Uh, no, absolutely not. Um, will you only write memos if you want to make a special note of something about your notes or your files so that you can remember them? And then you can create different relationships uh, with them. But if you don't want to do that, uh, it's absolutely not necessary at all. Um, also, external files are the files, file types that cannot be imported in NVivo, um, or uh, they're not downloadable or accessible. So what you can do is that you can put the link um, to that file um, in the external folders. Um, like if you see on the left side in data, you have got file, file classification and externals. And you can put that in externals um, and you can still code them and, and use that for a qualitative analysis. So when we get to the data part, I'm going to explain to you more. Um, but for right now, your answer is no, you don't have to do that absolutely. Um, but there is still an option, um, just so you know. Uh, so these are different uh, file options uh, that um, that there's a possibility that we can do that. So what we're going to do that is I'm going to show you one by one before we start um, moving towards coding. I'm going to show you um, practically how different kinds of files you can import and how can you can code those data. So right now I have uh, a transcript from the presidential debate. Um, I have a book um, that's uh, coded and then we're going to try to import uh, different data now um, so that you can see the different uh, kind of analysis we can run on uh, diverse data. Uh, now one more thing uh, I will clarify here that uh, I'm not using a pre-made um, node, nodes and cases here with all relevant files um, with one subject um, because the purpose of the workshop is only to tell you how we can actually gather different kind of data, code them and create interrelationships um, because in each case it would be different for your own thesis. For example, it would be different uh, in medicine than anthropology um, in comparison to psychology and education, you know, these things are very different. So I'm not using the data that's interrelated. So I'm only showing you these um, files to tell you how to code and node. Um, the overarching structure um, and your own files, you will have to do it uh, on your own way. So just understand the concept and then go along with that. So what we're going to do with that, uh, let's go ahead and import some kind of data. Uh, so let's go and actually bring something in. Uh, 
was bringing a picture from my class where we're celebrating a birthday of my teaching assistant. Just to show you that you can actually import the picture file also. So again, this is the properties uh, tab that you can see. You can go to pictures, attributes, and press OK. So now we have um, a picture tab also that we can actually code. Uh, if you want to see that, you can just double click that. And then you can see that in another folder. Um, now, if you want to add a text to that, or if you want to know, make an observation about that, uh, what you have to do that is you have to go up here, click to edit. And now it's editable, so you can write anything about that. For example, if I want to remember that, that was the birthday of my teaching assistant. And then I can use that data to actually and code that. And I'll show you how to do that. So uh, once we're done with our um, picture files, let's try to import some audio. So let's say we have some kind of sound here. Again, same process, you import that. And there you go. So if you want to have a look at that, you can also open that and it's going to be showing in the right pane. Um, so here's the audio file imported. So assume if you're importing some kind of um, audio interview that you have taken from people, um, you can import that interview as it is. And if you also have a written transcript of that, um, you can bring that in. And how would you actually sync your audio with the transcript? Again, you go to click to edit on top. And now we have a pane on the left side. And then you here, you can write the time span. For example, at 10th um, second, someone said that. So you can write that uh, 10 second. And then on in the content box, you can write well, let's say your interview is saying, uh, thank you for having me on the show. So we have that. Uh, and heads up, in 10 minutes, we'll have to uh, rejoin the meeting also, just so you know. Um, so we have the audio now. So what else is left here? Uh, let's go ahead and actually bring an Excel file. Um, yes, um, you can actually do the coding um, same way I showed you above now. What you can do is you can play the audio and then in transcripts, uh, simply write uh, what's being said in the audio. And then, um, you know, you can keep doing it uh, for the whole interview or you can uh, do that in Word file or Excel file or whatever um, tool you want to use and then bring it in NVIVO. And then you can simply sync it with the audio. So uh, now we're looking for an Excel file. Let's go ahead and find if I have an Excel file lying around somewhere. All of a sudden my Excel file seems to have disappeared, but I'll find somewhere. Okay, so it's selecting dot docs, so this is why I can see that. Now you can go and press Excel here. And now we should be able to see that. So we can import our dummy data here. And then it's going to give you some uh, wizard to make sure that your data is intact and it's in right folders. Um, just make sure before you import things, everything looks fine, all variables. 
are in order there's no missing values it's all good so you press next and then it's going to ask you to save that as a classification you can write server respondent select next and then um, that's a numbered one so i use closed ended I press finish and by the way you can use the exact same mechanism to bring in your responses from your um, surveys uh, through google sheets and everything else um, so it's exact same thing you only select open-ended questions and then you simply paste their answers so there you go we have an excel file also so now we have um, you can see the preview on the right side so we have a picture we have and the full transcript for the debate um, we have the actual file a whole book and the audio um, and once we have all our data well let's assume that's all our data um, we then we'll start coding and doing different queries and analyzing different themes um, so now the time comes where actually um, I want to make sure that you're on the same page um, so I'm going to go ahead and you know share allow you to share your screen so is are there any volunteers who would actually share their screen with nvivo and and show me how to import uh, different types of files in their nvivo project okay the screen you can do that um, just simply go ahead and um, share your screen Okay, let me see what I can do here. Okay, I've made you the host, so you, I hopefully you can do it now. Okay, so why don't you start a new project so that everyone else can see um, how we can do it from the beginning. So this is everyone how we do that I and mean, we make a new project select N. So you click on the files tab. Okay, very good. That's your first file. All right, very nice. Uh, you might want to import um, an audio file. Okay, um, 
you generally have to do the MP3 version, but if you don't have that, that's fine. It's okay. You don't have to search for the MP3. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you so much. Uh, this is how um, you do the um, import. Um, we can have one more free, free lancer who would uh, volunteer to do that. And you have to return the host privileges to scheme. Uh, okay, Rabia, you can do that. Uh, let me go ahead and make you the host. All right, go ahead, you can do that. Uh, you're the host now also, Rabia, so if you want to share your screen, you can do that. Uh, I guess you're on the phone. Okay, no problem. So go ahead and import those files. All right, fair enough. Okay, fair enough. All right, so we're back. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. Um, I hope that everyone now um, knows um, how um, the NVivo file structure is, um, how the interface is. Um, and it's fine, Rabia, it's no problem. Um, and how can we import files um, in our um, main NVivo system so that we can start coding now. So in the next step, what we're going to do is, uh, we're going to start coding our files to find out um, how it looks like. Um, before that, let's head on again to our file. So once we have um, found our, our objectives of qualitative analysis to so draw conclusion, develop theories and hypothesis, uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, talk about deductive coding and inductive coding. So deductive coding is basically developed 
before examining the data. Um, so that means that um, you haven't looked at the data um, yet, um, but you have um, some kind of idea in your mind that how it should be. Inductive coding are the one that when you look in the data and then you're um, starting uh, to make notes and, and different um, themes start to emerge. Um, and this slowly develop. Um, and so one thing leads to another and that's um, how the inductive coding uh, process works. Um, now, these are the three distinct stages of um, qualitative analysis, but remember NVivo is a very diverse software. You can use it in many, many ways. So you have to decide on your own based on your own research and what your supervisor wants um, to play with that. Um, but generally at first level, when you have added all your files, by the way, files are also known as sources. So once you've added all the sources, um, at this level, you're simply describing the data that you have. Um, different files, the kind of files, uh, maybe you want to do a little bit of uh, content um, page analysis to find different chapters and things like this. But in general, it only describes what the kind of data that you have. At the second stage, when you start coding that deeply, then you find out um, that what are the emerging themes in your analysis. Uh, at, and in the final stage, you analyze when you have all the themes developed, you analyze that uh, how does it look like, what are the relationships and what does it mean? Um, so to give you a practical example, so if you're doing a workplace uh, survey or research, uh, if that's um, taking place at head office, that's not a news. Uh, it's just a place where it's happened. So it just describes um, where the event happened. Uh, at the second level, which is a thematic one, it's about the discrimination against women. Um, that would be the theme of the analysis. And finally, this is a reflection on misogyny in the workplace, which is the deeper analysis of the lesser informations in the whole series. So you see it starts from um, the lowest importance to, to the highest and lower abstraction to the highest abstraction. Uh, if you want to look at it at a tree level thing, if uh, we're studying interpersonal relationships, um, we can either divide it into the family one or a non-family one, and then firm, further into friends and work colleagues. Um, with family, it's parent, child, spouse, partner, and sibling. So you get the picture that you know you have to m clearly make um, a structure how you're going to divide your data and how are you going to make sense of that. Um, some of the challenges that, you know, in the beginning, when you have less files and sources, that's not a problem. But as you start working with more and more data resources, you collect a lot of um, transcripts of interviews, uh, different articles, um, different um, books and things like this. And it gets, at some point, it gets so big and you get almost lost um, in the um, magnitude of the available information and at that point uh, you don't have to or you must not actually lose the bigger picture which is that you're looking for answers for certain hypotheses or trying to explore a phenomena and whenever you feel like you're getting lost just uh, think that you know what's your basic purpose of doing the idea um, the problem of um, categorization becomes a bigger one because of the very nature of the study that we're doing. Um, qualitative data is subjective by its nature. So sometimes there are themes um, that emerge, sometimes they don't. And even if they do, you know, putting them together in one category can one of the challenges um, that every researcher um, faces. Um, again, the validity of data, um, I think that relates to the question of Bhavna earlier. And we use the triangulation to increase reliability. We want to make sure that you know our data source is not a um, um, single person or event or uh, outlet, and that would actually encourage the biasness in our observation. So generally, it's good that we have multiple sources of information and multiple angles of looking at um, same thing. Um, also, the 
standard processes for coding and extracting themes um, do not exist. That means that you know you're free to play with whatever uh, um, strategy that you have in mind to make sense of your data. Um, and you can code the way you want to do. You can create nodes, you can create relationships. Um, but um, through experience of doing research uh, for years, I can tell you, um, you would get lost um, if you start uh, putting more effort into coding um, than thinking about the bigger picture, which is what is your ultimate purpose of the research. So there is a simple rule, which is like, keep it simple. Keep it simple and that is going to be a lot easier, not only on yourself, um, but on your research. And then we certainly have time constraints. You know, you have thesis deadline and the research paper submission um, deadlines. You know, that's also one of the stress sources. Now, uh, there are different things that we can uh, do within the end view. Uh, what it can, it can do is it can help you and create a database for different different sources that we already saw with audio and video, web sources, text. Um, you can manage your ideas by annotating the data and creating memos that will teach you how to do that. And then you can query the data and you can create reports. So let's head over back to NVO where we'll start again with how do we actually code data. So now we're back in the window. So let's start with our uh, presidential debate file. So there we have that. Let me close those other ones. So whenever you want to open a new file and you've started working with that, what I generally do, and uh, that's also recommended by the QSR uh, documentation on how to use NVivo, uh, is to find out, for example, if that's a huge file, let's say hundreds of pages, and you don't have time to read everything, um, or you want to find out what are the main um, themes emerging in these talks, what are the words, what are the uh, focus of uh, conversations in that. Uh, one simple way is to do the word analysis. It's a very strong and powerful um, statistical analysis uh, that's based into semantics and um, neurolinguistic programming in which you would actually make sense of the words and their correlations with each other. So what we can do with that, you go to this explore tab on the top and then here we have different options. Don't be overwhelmed with the fact that there are so many different options and you don't know any of them. You know, for right now, it's just make it quite easy so that um, you, know, you don't get lost into that. Um, so what you can do is that, uh, first of all, whenever you open a new file um, and you want to do an analysis without knowing what that is, you go to the word frequency analysis and you want to see what are the main emerging themes. So this is how you do the query. And by the way, if you want to save that query, you can also you know, um, save that by adding it to the project. And then you can name it and save it. And it's going to be saved here in your search tab on the left pane in queries. And you can see the query results. So right now I'm not going to do that. Um, now, the important part is that uh, you have different options here. So if you select file and externals, it's going to do that. It's going to search your query in those certain files. And right now I'm still in full transcript. Uh, that means the presidential debate one. Uh, so I don't have to go anything uh, anywhere else. And then you can you know, match it with some different other um, options in different folders and you can group them. But let's keep it simple. Now, I want NVivo to, NVivo to show me the, well, let's not call it thousand, let's say hundred most frequent words that was used in that ninth present presidential debate. Um, and I want the exact matches of the words. Um, you can also use the um, 
concatenation algorithm for that. For example, if you want not the word talk, but also the talking and the synonyms, synonyms, which is like, if you are looking for talk, you might be interested in speak also and specific words for that, like whisper. Uh, that's for one file. So you have to do that for everyone. And then you can also use the generalizations, but let's keep it in a simple uh, and call it the exact match. And then you have to also decide how long should those words be that you're looking for. So right now it's three. Um, but the problem with that is that if I select three, all uh, the conjunctions and um, adverbs and things like this, the shorter versions uh, are going to be in it also. So we don't want that. So let's make it at least five letter word. And then you can run the query. So now you see I have a detailed view of the top 100 words that was used in this file. So uh, word people was used 654 times and the word length is of course the six letter word. Um, you have class here, which is five letter word. And then you have fish down, upper American, white, children, social, Belmont. I mean, since it's a social science book, um, talking about um, the values uh, of American society, uh, the comparison between the society in 60s um, and now um, in 2008, I think that was book was published. So yeah, the difference between uh, the two societies 50 years apart. So, you know, these themes uh, emerge in uh, different sociological and anthropological uh, studies. So these are the words that appear more often in the presidential debate. And certainly people who are, who are in politics, you know, they would use um, these big words um, to, which are relevant to their uh, electorate. So now that we have these uh, words, uh, we can actually uh, save that query and then, uh, or we can actually start um, coding that also. Uh, some of the options here is that um, you can export that also, you can print that if you want, um, depending on what you want to do, you know, you, you, there are multiple options with that. Now, uh, another option is that you can select any of them, uh, let's say white, and you can also create that as a code. I'll shortly show you how you can code that, but you know, this is how you can do that. So let's go back to our file here. Okay. Now that's one way of analyzing uh, these themes and words in debate. Um, but let's say if we start coding our files manually, how would we do that? So what we do is that um, you see um, the first person hold um, is um, probably the compare of the show. And you know, that's the text he said. And then we also have Warren and then Holt and Bloomberg. So there's a speaker name always in the file. So for example, if you want to um, select hold and everything Holt said, uh, we want it to be under the hold node. So we can select everything that the hold said. Uh, that's where the standard begins. Let's get this out of the way. So again, you go and uh, select, and then you have to left click and you can press the code here. If you don't want to do that, and uh, we can also go to the home page and code that. Um, but I think easier is to left click and select code. And then there's this code window that's going to appear. Now these are all the codes that I've already coded because I've been working on this project. But if you want to create a new node, you can go on the left bottom here and press new node. 
and that would create a new node. I'm not going to do that, but and this is how you do that. You write the name of the node. Um, for example, in that case, you would write Holt, which is the speaker, and then you would start coding all the text that Holt said, um, and that would be um, a node. So next time, when you select Holt, for example, let's go to the Grime statistics. Um, to show you what's inside that. So now that you you know the file manual, let's go to the nodes one. I'll come back to memos, but let's go to the nodes. So these are the uh, ones that I've already uh, worked on. Um, so let's go about religiosity. And there's only one reference with that. So that's uh, the one that I coded. Please notice that on the right side, uh, whatever you code is going to show you in this colored uh, vertical um, lines so that you, know, you have a visual way of looking how you're coding things. Um, you also have a, a PDF version of the file if you want to open that to see where that is. So um, that is something um, that um, you have the option to do that. Uh, well, but you, code is something that when you select a block of text and then you code that under a node. So it's essentially um, the same thing. So we say that we have coded a certain text block, um, but every text block is known as a node. Um, so these are like specific end waiver terms. Uh, let me show you what it means. So now that we have um, this file, so if I go to the nodes section, so you see all these nodes, we call them nodes, but what happened is that you know these are let's think of that um, as um, the essay title, uh, and within that essay, everything that's written in that that would be part of that. You can also create the sub nodes in that. Uh, oh, I didn't share the screen. Okay, I hope that's visible now. So what you can uh, see that, you know, all of these are nodes. And if we select one of them, uh, what we can see is that there are different sub nodes um, that we can create also. And I hope it's not crashing again. Okay, so it is open. So you see um, all these um, nodes, you can have sub nodes inside that, but then um, the process of actually coding a certain block, text block, for example, in that, you see the college that's been coded, um, but it's part of a bigger node. So let's say node is an umbrella term and codes are uh, within those um, nodes um, altogether. Uh, so one way of also looking at that is by uh, creating a word cloud. And that's a fancy visualization that you can use in your uh, research papers or articles and things like that. So what it's going to do that it's going, uh, it's going to collect the thousand most common words. Let's make that hundred. So it's going to visualize the 100 most common words um, that you can actually send to less savvy people uh, to have a look how it looks like. 
And then you can also export that uh, to use in your articles and things like that. So this is how you create the word files. Now, finally, before we finish off for today, what you can do is that if, for example, if I want to decide that, you know, um, that gender differences and feminisms um, are the same thing, so I can do is I simply can, you know, left click it, cut it, and then, oh, let's say I want to cut both of them and merge them in marriage. So I'll just, uh, you know, create and oh, let's start over. So if I want to drag marriage to some other one, I can simply go and put that on gender differences. So now when I see the gender differences has the sub node called marriage. So you can simply play around with all of them and then drag uh, them everywhere else. So if you were to drag marriage back again to feminism, so now it's back to feminism. So that's the overall node structure that we have. Uh, we can do that. Um, as a um, homework, what I want you guys to do um, is that I want you guys to actually import the files that you want to analyze, be it interviews or um, any kind of picture files or audio files or transcriptions. And I want you to create nodes of that because tomorrow when we're gonna be studying uh, more advanced visualizations and query methods and classifications, relationships and memos, um, then we're going to be actually needing that. Uh, so before we actually go that I can briefly tell you what memos are for. Memos are basically the notes that you take about uh, different uh, observations or uh, nodes that you can do that. For example, on every node, if you left click, you have a memo link. You can link it to an existing memo that you have created, or you can click a new link to a new memo. So for example, if I want to create a new memo, I'll just click that. I will say my thoughts on marriage. And then I can simply you know, um, write in description if I want to. If not, I'll just click it. And that's now connected to a memo. So it's also going to open a window where you can add, well, let's say um, I add something that the respondents were all married earlier in their lives. So that was my observation from the interview um, on marriage. And then, you know, I simply put it through uh, the memo. So this is my way of reminding myself what were my impressions of other people's responses on the search or specific topic. So um, let's go ahead and give someone an opportunity to create some nodes uh, and create some memos. Um, who's up for that? So what you do is that you select some portion of your text, right click on that. And then you can code that. And you can select any name and you know, uh, press OK, then you will have a code. Uh, you have to create a new node. If you go on the bottom left, there it says new node, yes. And then you can name anything. Okay, fair enough. So this is basically how you do um, the um, coding, um, you go to a file and then you select different relevant themes and um, then you can create new notes based on that. And then you do it for every file that you have in the um, sources section. And then once you're done, then you start doing the thematic analysis. All right, thank you so much. I guess the notes are there. Uh, Rabia, what are the tools that you cannot find? Yeah, note options are only going to be in the left pane and they're not on the top. Um, this is how NVO is structured. 
um, on top you would uh, see the uh, import create and explore but not nodes nodes are only the categories where all your codings reside so this is the structure of um, nvivo so it doesn't have to be everywhere so are there any questions No questions at all? A sub node is very simple. Uh, Rabia, you simply create a node and then you drag it um, onto another node and then it will automatically become a sub node. Uh, Anam, do you mean um, about memos where we write our observations and impressions? Uh, of the node, or do you mean um, that you don't understand how to create nodes? Um, Rabbi, you can share your screen. Let me see um, how you're doing that. Uh, so select one of them, not both, one of them. And then you dra and drag and drop another. There you go. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> so that's how you do it. All right. Um, so I guess that was it for today. Um, hopefully, you know, it was informative and uh, you learn basic structures of NVO. Uh, we did the, the queries. Um, we also did the word clouds. Uh, our topic according to our uh, first year of the workshop has been covered with basic coding of text spaces, base files and um, different types of files and getting to know the NVO workspace. And we also studied about um, recording comments and ideas in memos. Um, so tomorrow we're going to dive deep into uh, some complex analysis um, and developing different themes from our data and how to use that in different um, qualitative analysis like um, explorative analysis or ground root theory uh, and other things. So um, thank you so much for today and I hope to see you tomorrow same time.